Hi, I'm Dave McGrail. Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. With me today is my good friend and colleague, Lieutenant Daryl Liggins from the Oakland, California Fire Department. We're inside a standpipe equipped building today, and just before we got ready to start our operation, we charged the FDC and we discovered that the supply pipe coming into the building was actually broken. This is something that's happened to us in the real world, and I wanted to talk with Daryl today about some of the solutions when this occurs. Daryl, based on what happened here today, can you explain a little bit about why that happened possibly? What goes on with standpipe systems? And then we'll talk a little bit about maybe some of the solutions. Well, Dave, as you know, standpipe systems are inherently dangerous and problematic systems for firefighters. They can uh, supply very little pressure. Sometimes they can pro provide less volume than we want. And as our late friend Andrew Fredericks mentioned, uh, pumping into standpipe systems are like pumping into a black hole. We pump water into one area and we expect good pressure and volume coming out the other end. And we know that's not always the case. What happened here is when the fire, uh, fire pump operator was pumping into the system, we found a break in the uh, section of piping down here, and that would rob the uh, nozzle team of good pressure and volume. Let's take a quick look at exactly what that looked like. We'll have the outside guys go ahead and charge that line that's going into the FDC so that we can actually look down here and show all the viewers exactly what occurred with the supply pipe here. So on the outside, Mike, if you guys are able to charge that line, that'd be great. It was a small break toward the bottom down here that you guys will see, and we believe that maybe what happened is the cold weather caused the pipe to swell open and break, and today when we charge this FTC to supply this standpipe, this is what we got. That's going to be plenty, guys. So in this case, what we need to do is we need to isolate the standpipe uh, inlet and to find an alternate way to supply water to the firefighters on the upper floors. That could be a rope bag, it could be bringing it up to a ladder, but in this case, we're gonna go ahead and supply the standpipe through the first floor outlet. Okay, we saw what happened when there's a broken supply line between the FDC and the building's riser. Obviously, we're not able to use that to supply this standpipe system. Lieutenant Liggins explained some of the reasons for why that happens. He's also going to explain a couple of the things that we can do to overcome that type of problem. Daryl, why don't you tell the folks out there what it is we're doing here to try and overcome that break on the supply side. Uh, so what we did here is we decided that we're going to pump through the first floor outlet. Uh, to do that, uh, first we have to make sure that there's no pressure reducing device on the outlet itself. If there's a pressure reducing device, we'd want to remove that from the system to not restrict the water that we're pumping into the system. Now, pressure reducing device, external device that we can remove, what's the issue with the pressure reducing valve? Internal components, we can't remove it, it's a check valve, we can't pump into that, correct? That is correct, Dave. If there's a pressure reducing valve, which is usually going to be found on your high rise buildings, those valves cannot be pumped into because they're one-way valves. In that case, you're gonna to have to find an alternate way to supply the building, either stretching lines up the stairs or uh, an attack line or making a standpipe out of a uh, three inch or two and a half inch hand line. So this is a standard valve here and you've got a set up here that the other firefighters helped us build. Tell us a little bit about this. So in this case, we don't have a pressure reducing valve or a device, Dave. So what we decided to do is uh, we can use a Siamese. We didn't have a Siamese here today at the site, but we found a uh, gated two and a half by two and a half inch uh, Y, which is very common to find. We uh, added a couple of uh, double females here and we plugged it into this first floor outlet. And then we set up two lines so we can supply the firefighters attacking the fire upstairs. Let me ask you this, in a real situation, based on the appliance we have here, we could put one line and start our supply with one line and then come back and stretch the second line so we can get them water fast. Can you explain that to the folks? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we could have absolutely just used a double female and supplied one line into this outlet. However, we want to build a redundant system. We always want a minimum of two lines coming into this fire department connection. So in this case, it was best to use a device that we could get two lines into the system. Let's show the firefighters the procedure you use to start introducing water into the riser now. So now that we have everything connected, Dave, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up the uh, hand wheel. This is easiest done before we have any water pressure against this valve. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and charge the uh, lines, and after the lines are charged, we're going to go ahead and open these valves. And we're always going to charge the line slowly so we don't have another break in the system. I'll have one of the guys from the outside call for water at the pump, and we'll get water into this system, and then the firefighters out there watching this can see exactly how this works. Give us water, Scotty, one at a time. So water coming through one supply line, going into the building. We'll get that first one charged. Daryl, how's that look? Got the second line being charged now. Water coming into the building. Take a couple of the kinks out of it and we're good to go. Okay, so there you have it. Lieutenant Darrell Liggins from the Oakland Fire Department, very experienced fire officer, has given us an alternative and a method to overcome a problem we might encounter when we have a broken supply coming from an FTC into the building. Darrell, I appreciate the information. Thank you, brother. Right Thanks for watching. This has been Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Dave McGrail with Darrell Liggins.